If your nib's too slow and your ink won't flow, here's one of the places that you can go. Larry is here to help you through with Mr. Announcer and Cubby too. It's Larry's Fountain Pen Reviews. Okay, folks. You're recording late. To the Hangout. So, everybody's here, and we want to welcome uh, John Lane from the Coast of London. Ta-da! And no other than that gentleman up there that's smiling. And I think his name is Frank. Yay! From Federalist Pens. And then the little brother, the little bitty baby brother, Marco. Oh, little little baby. Yeah, yeah. And the same guy's here. Ta-da! So, hey. we got everybody going on. We got Mel, we got Deborah, we got Michael, we got Norman. And we got Kara, and we got Frank, and we got uh, Mr. Announce, and we got me, but we got Didi somewhere in the house going Don't crazy. Worry. So, so <laughs> Didi is Didi's the star of the show. So, okay. So, John, again, thank you. Welcome. And Frank, welcome. So, guys, it's your show. John, go ahead. Don't be best. Don't be what best. do you want to talk about, Frank? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Talk about everything. Talk about uh, you and uh, Coles and uh, the products that w you have, and I'll gladly uh, show my wares, and we'll talk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm into my fourth month working for Coles, and it's been uh, a, just an absolute blast. Um, when I left Pilot, I wasn't sure if I was going to stay in the business, or because there wasn't weren't a lot of pen, other pen lines I wanted to represent, and I've been a Dupont fan for 20 years. Um, I started collecting lighters. I mean, this is my first line two lighter that I've had for 20 years and about two and a half million air miles. So um, going to work for Coles, representing um, um, DuPont and Viscotti has been been great. Uh, you know, I worked for Pilot for 31 and a half years. So I kind of had all that down. And then I come to work for Coles and I got to learn not one line, but two. Uh, but it's been absolutely great uh, doing that and studying the history of the two companies. And Michael Jarre and Mark Cole are just great to work for. And the whole team there is absolutely uh, wonderful. So it's been been a great experience. Tony in the house. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I had an <laughs> episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and just the, just the whole evolution of, of both lines. I mean, DuPont has been a, a very traditional line for many, many years. Uh, it was really on its way up about 20 years ago. And uh, you know, like a series of bad distributorships, factory problems. Uh, Kohl's, I think, got it uh, about a year and a half ago. And things started to, to develop and started to get into places. And then this idiotic pandemic hit and put everything on hold. But now we're starting to sell. We've got the new Diamond Guyosh, which I can show everybody here. Uh, Larry, that's going to be your next. You, you have to go from Scotty now to the Dupont, Larry. Okay. Uh, yeah, we know it's coming. Yes, yes, yeah. The okay. Here's the plan of attack, uh, John, and uh, I'll be on welfare pretty soon. And Tony, it's your fault too. So I'm going to get the white one, and then after the uh, uh, what is that called? The, the whatever, the snow white breeze, whatever the hell it is. But anyway, so blizzard. It, yeah. Then I'm going to get the. I got to go for Dupont, baby. It, it just it's going to rock the house. Yeah, it's it's an awesome looking pen. It's uh, it's the, the the new ones that have come out, the Diamond Guyoche, uh, have just been awesome, and we've got plans to bring out some more colors next year. Uh, I've got uh, a new pen that um, uh, actually Frank and I were talking about today. That he he did his best to fill up my inbox and out, Outlook today um, with all of his emails, but uh, we've got uh, got three new colors in the D initial. Uh, we've got the sword pens. I mean, it's just really, Paris is really responding to the requests that uh, that Michael and Mark send them. Um, and it's just been, it's been great. And the quality is just unmatched. It's just, it's, I've always been impressed with the DuPont quality. I mean, I've had um, DuPont pens and lighters, like I said, for 20 years. It's been great. I've never, ever owned a DuPont pen, so. Well, that's going to change. Favorite. That is going to change. Yes, yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm expecting big things from it. <coughs> No less. Big things. You, you, Isn't that you right, will Tony? not be disappointed. Big things. Yes. So l let me ask you a question for a minute, John, here. Uh, being a rep for Visconti, do you do, do you do a lot of contacting directly with Visconti? And if so, who do you talk with from there? Um, I speak, uh, I, when I went to work for Coles, um, 
uh, Niccolo reached out and wanted to do, do a Zoom call. And so there were a couple other people on it. Um, Mark and Michael encouraged me to email them directly if I have questions, if I, if I need something, if I, have, uh, if I want to see what they got laying around the factory and can, maybe can make a few pens that we could sell here. Um, so it's, and, and same with DuPont. I mean, I've done Zoom calls with DuPont and I'm really looking forward to going over there because two of those, those two factories are really something I want to see with the introduction of the lava colors and the homo sapiens. Uh, I want to see how they inject that color into the lava. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then I want to see the lacquering process for the lighters and for the pens. And I know when I would go to Japan and tour the pilot factories, I would try to sneak away just to go hang around like a nin machine. And then the biggest treat is when I could go in the Makie building and watch the artists do Makie, which is oh. absolutely fascinating to do, to, to see. So uh, I love fact pen factories. You all love fountain pens. I love to see how they're made. And uh, with these two brands, uh, it, it's I can't wait. So who has taken over uh, as far as the, the design making of the pens now? For which, which, which the line? Homo um, the, the Homo sapiens, um, we've, we have input into what they want to do. I believe, again, it was before my time, but I think the lava colors they did on their own. And uh, we told them what colors we'd like. Okay. Um, and so, and then if there's, they'll send us prototypes of things and we'll look at them and then make suggestions as to how to improve them Excuse or. Me, I'm, really I haven't finished them. all this yet. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear that. I didn't either. What happened? Oh, someone else was talking. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. So um, they, they do value our input a lot. And so, um, you know, like like these uh, the new explorers, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, there were a couple of tweaks that we asked them to do on that, and they'd already done. And they actually had a thought of it and already done them. So yeah. it's it's uh, great. L let me answer a question because I've been curious. You know, uh, these pens uh, that are really just remarkable fountain pens. Uh, in my opinion, some of the best pens ever made. How do they get this lava rock, and they how do they crush it and, and, and formulate the whole thing together. It, it is a it is a top secret process that they won't even tell us how to do it. Uh, I know that it's top secret clearance, intelligence. All right, that's your job, little Mark. Intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that with this, um, there is quite it's quite the process to inject the color into the lava. And on the on the blizzard, which you will soon have, Larry, you'll be able to see that the lava dust is much more pronounced than in the others. Definitely. Uh, John, I've got a question. Yes. Uh, on that blizzard, you know, I, I know that when uh, and I've, I have a, a lava homo sapien, I've got, I got more Visconti than any other brand uh, in my collections, but I, on the, do. I've understood that they say, well, you know, on the, on the lava, on the normal lava homo sapiens, it can stain. You got to be careful because it is absorbent. It can stain. Uh, I'm wondering how in the world do you keep the white from staining? Is there a coating on it that keeps that? Because you're going to have to dip that in the ink. Yeah, good ink. question. And absolutely, there is a coating on here. Okay. And will it will not stain? Because again, you know, when in 1994 when Namiki came over here, they brought mm -hmm. over a maplewood pen. Okay, uh -huh. looked great. But then when you started to use it your finger rolls would work into it and it would stain and god forbid if you got any ink on it you'd have to go out in your in your shop and take your your sander to it mm. so yeah. um so no this has a special coating on it and it will not stain good and while i've got this off you can see too this is uh, this is visconti's first uh, in-house made nib um we went from bach nibs to making our own and it's uh, it's it's really passed the tests of a, of a couple of the nib people so yeah, I, uh, I love my nibs. I mean, the nibs on it are superb. I think. Yeah, yeah, superb. And it's got it's got the uh, magnet lock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the power fill. How how long ago, John, did they start uh, using the in house? Because I've got a lot lapis lazuli, right. the uh, magnifico, and I was wondering if that has that new nib or if that's the uh, is that the just the old box. Yeah, no, this is the first the first one, and, and don't anybody start throwing stuff at their monitors when they see that this is a rollerball. 
okay? <laughs> this, the Polynesia uh, limited edition was the first in-house uh, Visconti nib. Okay. And then they'll all be transitioned over. Okay. I did get booed at the Dallas Pen Show when I, when I saw this, but we were out of fountains, and so they just sent me the rollerball. I, I saw you on an episode, uh, mm -hmm. interview with the uh, Andersons, or I believe maybe uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned, hey, I'm a rollerball user, and and, and uh, Brian was giving you grief, I think. Uh, Brian Anderson's <laughs> giving me grief. Brian Goulet has given me grief. And <laughs> you, you all will be happy to know this is the pen that I'm using now. It's uh, the, the Crystal Dream, which I think is just an amazing pen. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, what I, that's what I use now. And then... The Don, does years. it look like that? Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty close. We can, we can do Visconti all day. Okay. We can hang out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. so yeah. So that was the Polynesia was the first in house nib. So, what they were having a problem with the Dream Touch nib. Uh, to be honest with you, I've only, out of all the Dream Touch nibs I own, I've only had problem with one of the nibs it was a, a, a fine nib that uh, uh, I bought so I sent it back and the seller quickly uh, sent me a, a, another pen and just made it a medium nib uh, wh what was wrong with the problem they were having with this dream touch nib they were getting a lot of complaints the quality uh, just wasn't there the in inspecting the nibs what, what, what can you kind of fill us in on that um, again, that's probably before my time, Larry, but I, I know since I've been on, um, I, you know, working for Pilot, we were all pretty quality conscious because Pilot was making the best Japanese pens, you know, around with the nibs. And I, it's, I was paying attention to that, and we, we hardly get any repairs for Visconti. Um, so that was probably a while back. I, I, I know that there were some nib problems, like in 2015, 2016, I think, but that's all been taken care of. So how many people are working in the uh, Visconti plant, if you know, roughly? Um, you know, I haven't, I've seen a video of the plant. It's in a 15th century villa, which is really cool looking. And it looks pretty, I'm not going to say primitive, but it looks pretty tight. So I, I can't give you an exact number. I mean, I spoke with three or four people there, but not a lot. Uh -huh. I don't think. Not a lot. So now, talking about the Netherlands, let's go to the Netherlands for a minute now. So do the... People like in the Netherlands, uh, did the dealers get the Viscontis before the states get them? Or how does that work? No, everything everything is released pretty much on schedule to, to the world. Um, they do tend to put things on their Instagram page before they send them over to us. So we've kind of told them that, that we'd appreciate it if they would kind of not do that anymore. Uh, because, you know, with the web being so, you know, popular and people find out about things with Instagram and Facebook and, and social media. Yeah. So um, everybody pretty much gets released at the same time. Uh, another thing I was wondering on when they, they make, let's just say the homo sapien, the process in making it, how long does it actually take to make a pen? Hmm. That's a good question. Again, they, they don't tell us, they won't tell us exactly how it's done with the with the lava um it doesn't take all that long i mean with pilot it would take four months to make a Machia emperor um it doesn't take anywhere near that i'd say probably maybe a month month and a half wow that's still some time okay yeah, yeah a lot of work so i wonder how many hands go through uh putting the pin together because you got well, you've got the you've, you've got the nib until I see the factory and see how it's done, I wouldn't be able to answer that uh, uh, correctly. But I'd say there's there's a, a lot of different parts go into it. Um, with the with the hook safe lock, that's got to be assembled. The uh, this has got the uh, the power filler, the double reservoir. So there's a lot of work that goes into these pens. And again, I don't don't know exactly how many people are there, but it's 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 pretty compact. And one more question that I'll give it to you, Frank. Uh, is Visconti going to be coming out with any new inks? Um, not that I know of. And that's I've, I've asked that question uh, because ink was so popular at Pilot. And uh, I know that Lisa Anderson wants to bring back the purple. Uh, the blue is really nice. I like the blue a lot. And um, 
you know, we'll, we'll ask, we'll just keep asking. Yeah. Well, tell them that uh, Larry's heading Fort Worth to, to get on it. We need some new inks <laughs> now. Uh, okay. Okay, Frank, your turn. My turn? Yeah, you, you can hang out a little bit. All right, your turn's over. Next. next. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is a forgiving crowd. Cool, I ain't got nothing well, on me. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, you guys know my story. We've been we've been doing these uh, most of this year. Uh, I was uh, very happy. I was able. Uh, I've been selling pens as uh, a retailer now. This is my fifth year, and I was happy to be able to buy in to Visconti with Coles last year. Uh, it is a, a big commitment, uh, which is the reason why a lot of dealers don't represent them. Stop, uh, pardon me, stop right there for a minute, Frank. Let me ask you a question right there. Well, if, I'm not going to get involved in the details, but, but no, there, well, there is, is, a, there is to, a substantial buy-in for a dealer. You're accepted to... to you you're kind of are accepted. You have to make a, a cash commitment and, you know, and you buy in and, and you commit to buying so many products at right. the start. And uh, from there, you know, and uh, I was very happy to be able to do that last, last summer. I actually did that in D.C., and I had actually known uh, Michael Hujara and Mark Cole prior. Uh, I had been going to the Philly Pen Show since 07, since I discovered the pen community in 05. I've been going to the Philly Pen Show since 07. I met Dante there, Del Vecchio, yeah. who founded Visconti. And I met him there in 08, 09, and 10. And uh, my brother and I, uh, I think I mentioned to you, we're, in, we're into racing. We actually like uh, open wheel Formula One and Indy racing. Right. Dante is actually a motorcycle racer. If you okay. follow his Facebook page, you've seen that. He's a gentleman racer. He self-funds and he, and he is a semi-pro racer in Italy. And he does a lot of racing. And uh, another Coles rep at the time was actually a, a gentleman racer. Mm -hmm. He was uh, actually uh, a Visconti rep for them. And he's not there now, but we had all talked about racing and we would talk we would stay and drink and talk about racing well into the night, you know, so it was good. And so they knew me. Uh, they knew from 15 that I got in, into the pen business and I told them eventually I was going to be able to buy and represent Visconti, you know, so I was finally able to do that last year. And uh, yeah, I have uh, on hand, I carry Homo sapiens pens on down. Uh, I always have Homo sapiens uh, I have uh, Rembrandts. I have uh, basically Van Goghs. I have Mirages. I have a lot of every day you call them Visconti on hand. So I bring trays of these types of items. You know, Visconti is actually a more of a full pen line than people realize. I mean, we have a pen here that we can sell for $100, for $99. This is the Breeze. And this pen lists for $129. All kinds of great colors here. You know, got amazing purple and uh, it's a blue and all. And we have those, they're only $100. Then we move into the Mirage, which I actually like a lot because there is a lot of work on to these uh, barrels. They're actually faceted, the whole pen is faceted. You can see it actually is done on like a column, like a door column. Mm -hmm. So it's faceted. And these pens are only 160 list. And so really nice. And it has that lock closure on a pen. That's yeah, I have one of those dollars. extremely nice pens. Yep. They are really nice. Yeah, and, they're, and they're 159 lists. Mm -hmm. And I got them on the site for 129. This is the horn. It's a horn gray. It also comes in a navy blue and an azure blue. Uh, amber, emerald green. Really, really nice. I have a question. Yes. Uh, are, are the nibs and the, the lock safe the same on the breeze as they are in the Mirage? Yes. They are. Oh, wow. The, the nib is, yes. The nib yes. is, but not the lock safe. Do they have... So what it makes a, them... Yeah, what makes them... Uh, different is these are actually number five. These are still Bach nibs. Mm -hmm. For the time being, Bach is still making the steel nibs. I'm sure that's going to change. The breeze. John would know that better than me. But yeah, this is the Mirage. This oh, is the a number mirage. five nib. 
Yeah, number five, Bach, Nib, and the Mirage. The number five box are the Mirage and the Breeze. The pen that I can sell for $100. Is it 20% the, off? The Breeze and is the a one, snap cap? Or is it a yeah. lock safe? Oh, snap it's cap. a snap cap. Snap cap. Okay. The lock safe is the Mirage. Number five as well. Right. 129 from 159. So 130 from 160. I like, I like, then the we move, move into, uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the blue. There's yeah. the, that horn, nice, light, gray, blue horn. Yeah. Oh, I, I meant the breeze. <laughs> the medium blue Azor and then the navy. The breeze. Oh, yeah, the blue breeze. That's so beautiful. Yeah, that guy right there. Oh, yeah, that's the one, man. <laughs> it is really nice. Then we move into uh, Rembrandt, which is actually an older brand. Some of these brands, uh, Dante designed when he was still there with the company, you know, he's no longer with the company, but yeah. I also have actually a couple of discontinued uh, Rembrandts that I was able to acquire on a special purchase from Kohl's at the beginning of this year, an ivory one, which they stopped making. Now they just make a white model, but this is actually simulates ivory with the veins in it and all. So this is ivory. These are number six nibs. Now we're moving into number six nibs. These are number six box steel nibs. So again, the Breeze and the Mirage are number five. The Rembrandt and the Van Gogh are number six. And I'll get into the difference in a minute. So these are the Rembrandts, number six Bach. I actually have on hand the blue, the red, uh, the dark, the black, which basically has a lot of veins in it. You know, again, these are meant to simulate Rembrandt uh, tones and paintings. So there's a lot of different veins uh, of color in these, but the primaries are red, black, ivory. There's also a couple of special edition ones that are dark nib. This one's called the Colonial Gray. Again, older model, which I actually have. These are all 189 lists. I'm selling them for 140. I also have one that's called Special Ops. It's like a khaki army green with the darker anodized. It's the cool. nib is also dark anodized. So number six Bach in them, really sharp. So you can get them in the blackened number six Bach nib. Again, for that same price point. Here we hold it for a right there for one second. Thank, let me ask John the question. Yes, sir. John, are, are they yeah. able to put, offer gold nibs to the Rembrandt or the Van Goghs, you think? No, I don't think so. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you, Frank. No, that's fine. That's fine. Could that be fitted uh, on the number six? Maybe. But then you're talking about a $400 upcharge because that's what these nibs retail for. I'm going to get into that in a little bit, that I do sell nibs separately if anybody wants them. I will sell Dream Touch Palladium nibs. I'll sell 18 karat Bach nibs. And I'm guessing I don't have them, and I'm sure... Uh, Coles is willing to sell the new in-house 14 karat nibs as well separately. I'll have to talk to them about that, about the price, I'm sure. I'm looking at the same price point. Uh, it'll be double, Frank. Well, it, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> for me, for me, it will be double, exactly. <laughs> you, you caught me. You caught me for a minute there. Yeah, that, that, no, that's standing right there. Lost my train of thought. Thank you. Like, like, for I'm me, it will be. So then you're talking about a $400 upcharge. So you might as well move into the Pentagon or uh, the Divina or the Homo sapiens for that price point. You know, there's no point in paying that extra money when you might as well step up into the better pen for that. Right. You know, that's, yeah. It's the best way to answer that. For John. Speaking of the Divina, are they not manufacturing them anymore? Because uh, I can't seem to find a brown elegance. Um, the, there's the green, the black, the blue, and how long ago was the brown out? Uh, might've been in the been late nineties. Yeah. It's been a while. It has yeah. been a while. Yeah. No, that's not being made anymore. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, it's, it's a, the Davina's a great pen. I mean, this is my buddy, my buddy Ken Jones gave me this when he repped Visconti, this Davina ballpoint. And I never knew what the hell this was this thing kept falling off and when i went to work for Coles, i said oh yeah it's the my pen system is what's that right so i just right. thought i had a defective pen i was going to send it back to you now that i work for you and uh 
So, but anyway, the Davina is a, a great, uh, great pen. I, I love yes. the colors, and um, we're. I know that we've asked Italy to to relook at that line. It's it's uh, ergonomically one of the most comfortable pens I've ever held. Yeah, it absolutely. Just, it, just, it feels right in the hand. And uh, what you got there, Frank? Uh, moving into the next uh, steel pen line, which is the Van Gogh, which is a very popular line. A lot of different colors in that. And I have the Rembrandt here to compare them. Uh, the Rembrandt is just a little uh, shorter. It has uh, the my initial, you know, the custom, uh, the my cap uh, version for Visconti. You could put, you could take the Visconti logo uh, out of there. It's magnetic closure and you could put your own initials in there or other things that they sell separately. They both have a metal uh, finial on the end too, both number six. But what makes the Van Gogh more special is you can feel the weight difference. This is a, a, a better model. It is faceted. Uh, it is multi-sided on these. Again, snap closure on both models. Same number six Bach nib, but uh, a much healthier pen. They're both cartridge converter. Of course, you have the famous Pont Vecchio clip named the bridge them now the van goghs come in a lot of different choices so a few here i actually have again able to take advantage of a special sale of older discontinued models that i got into at the beginning of this year that cole's had available this first one here is uh called vincent's chair this one is actually still available, but limited numbers. This one is definitely discontinued. This one's called Shoes. These are all Van Gogh paintings. That's what these are all named after. And it's using the same colors from these paintings. So Shoes is actually a really, really nice brown with different darker shades of brown and undertones. And Van Gogh painted basically a whole worn pair of shoes. If you've ever seen it, you know the one I'm talking about. It's called Shoes. And right, those, those come with the box sunflowers with, with next the painting. To that. Right. They come they with a box with the a box with the painting. With the painting. And in it. also some of them had matching ink. Not these old ones, but a lot of the newer ones, which I'll get into on this side, do come with, with a matching ink. That was kind of special edition. That's something that Visconti does that's different. Getting back to how can they only have four or five primary colors? Because because the models like the, uh, like the Van Gogh, they will come with a matching ink, special edition with the pen. And that's why these are $2.99 list. Uh, that's why, like I said, this is a better pen. That's why they're $100 more than the Rembrandts. You get a better presentation. You get a, uh, basically a weightier your pen, more faceted, more work, and you get matching ink as well. And, Frank, and a bookmark. There will be another... Um in addition to the um, Van Gogh line uh, this uh, holiday season with the same type of deal with the- I uh, saw that, the white one. Yeah, with a new color and, and, a, and a, a bottle really cool. I haven't seen the color of the ink yet, but Mark tells me, Michael tells me it's really nice. Hey Frank, can you nice. give me I a favor? I saw the flash, I did see the flash for it. Yeah. Hey, can you hold that blue yeah. breeze up to that blue Van Gogh there? <laughs> I'm always trying to compare blues with other blues, but the I can blue... never get it. The blue breeze to the blue Van Gogh. Yeah. So this one on the end here. Yeah. That's called the self. That's the self portrait. Oh wow. That is Van Gogh's self portrait. That's beautiful. Which I'll get into in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Thank you. So sure. So that is uh, that is the sunflowers. Again, these two here are actually older models that I do have a, a couple copies of each of them uh, that. Like I said, Kohl's had, and they offered a you know, special purchase to any vendor that wanted them. This one is the irises, uh, the iris flowers, different shades of teal and green and blue. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, and then we get into the, the current ones. Uh, Souvenir Mauve, the pink. Red Vineyard, which actually is my favorite. Uh, this is the only one, this is one of the later ones this is the orchid in blossom. This one actually is rose gold trim. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. Even the nib is rose gold. The rest of them are all uh, basically uh, rhodium plated. And this one is rose. And then, like I said, we have the self portrait. The only one I don't have here, which goes all the time quickly, is uh, the Starry Night, the darker blue, which seems to be a popular favorite. That's a beautiful Keep pen. Keep them Starry in stock. Night. So those are all the Van Goghs. Those, no, it's all good. Those are two ninety nine lists, and I sell them for two forty on the site. And then, of course, we move on to Homo sapiens. So we know about the latest ones, the color ones, the blizzard, the white. Uh, my Inferno here that I have in front of me, I always have a couple copies of, of these on hand. The Sandstorm, no, I don't. That actually became the more popular one. Uh, first, I wasn't sure about it. The more I looked at it, the more I liked it. Uh, Larry bought one, and uh, I also sold my other ones, so I'll be getting more of them soon. There's a lot of actually black, like John was alluding to, there's a lot of black in this one. You can see is actually, it really makes it a really sharp red. Like yeah, a really a red. burned out red. It's, it's really nice. It's real rich. I love Frank, it. Frank, I, I sure. talked to... Frank, I, I was talking to Eddie. someone that had that blizzard. I got a question for Frank and Larry. Uh, when you pick up the black lava, the, the original Homo sapiens, and feel it, does it have a different feeling because of that coating? Uh, just a it question. does. You'll remember I mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, when I sent out my opinion and my blog of this, and I announced it, I said that the new color line has a different texture to it. Yeah. It feels like a totally different pen. The black yeah. ones are much smoother than this. Yes. Yeah. And I always have uh, Magma's uh, Bronze Age and Dark Age. In fact, this Dark Age actually has a Palladium nib on it. This one's less Palladium. I still have Palladium nibs. I actually have an extra fine uh, medium and a 1.3 stub new to sell separately. This is wow. a medium. This is on this pen medium with the box that says it is a 23 karat Dream Cut uh, Dream Touch medium. Perfect. That I can ship. And my other ones here have the 18 karat Bach. Of course, the new color ones have the new 14 karat in-house. Yeah. The, uh, I got a question on the nib changeover. Go ahead. If I would, if I went to, for instance, get a new nib unit for, uh, I, I don't have the um, Homo sapiens. I have uh, Medici. If I went to get a new Love nib that pen. That is, because they're switching over manufacturer, the entire screw in nib unit, is that going to be any kind of an issue with the nib changeover? I don't think so. I Not mean, that I've seen. It, it's going to be just the, the box specs. And yeah. okay. it, it's going to be the same same type of nib. Obviously not the same nib. No, I, I, and that, my only reason is because I've considered a different nib size. I have one more question on the new Homo sapiens. And yeah. what have they done to address the magnetic cap from rusting? Because like I have a Van Gogh and you know, my magnet inside is rusted. I got to send it back to you to get it warrantied. But what you have they not, done? You should not take it in the shower with you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, in the, that's in the instructions. Okay. You, I, just, you know, you don't that, get in the shower or the bathtub or something. I have to be able to take it in the shower with me. And I live in Florida, so I have to be able to take it in the ocean. <laughs> uh. But in reality, no, but in all seriousness, like my Van Gogh, I have to send it back to you. I didn't do, I put water in it once because I got some ink in the cap. And then when I wasn't using it for uh, like a month, when I went back and used it, I realized that my inner magnet had rusted. I mean, you, you have to clean your pens yeah. you know, every once in a while. And so it's obviously going to be with warm water and maybe just a squirt of 409 or a little ammonia, but um, it should rust. I mean, I've, I've been all these years of selling pens. I've never heard of an of a inside of a cap or, or anything rusting. So, if, I know I'm talking about the magnet that was inside the cap. Yeah, is definitely is. That's why I'm asking about the Homo sapien because that's quite a step up from a Van Gogh. Um, no, I can't. I mean, I, that's something I'll definitely ask because I'm at a loss for that because I just don't know. Um, you know, yeah, Florida there's a lot of humidity all through the South. There's a humidity issue and that sort of thing, but it, it shouldn't rust. 
but we'll get you an answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, I, I can attest to the uh, the uh, the repair department at Coles. Uh, they, they they do a he does a, I've I've sent a few pens up there. Not not so much for uh, I bought some used pens, some used Visconti that had some issues that had to get sent back to get repaired. And uh, as it I I can't remember his name, Derek or Darren or Daniel. Uh, Daniel, there it is. Uh, he's, he's been wonderful. I, the, I only have one pen that, that Visconti couldn't. I have a I have a Jacques de Molay. It's a uh, it's an overlay with the, like the uh, you know the, a real nice overlay, right. and the and the the uh, the plating was coming off, so it was like getting shiny when it was supposed to be a dull look. It was right. coming off, and I sent it back to uh, Italy. And uh, they get about two months later, and right before the pandemic, so it took another two or three months. Finally, came back, and uh, you know, he said, uh, "They said we're sending the pen back to you. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't replate it. Okay. So uh, you know, not much we could do. It doesn't affect the the function of the pen, but uh, you know, other than that, they're great. Coles does a great job of uh, of, of taking care of doing customer service. And by the way, John. I got to say, Coles has the best marketing department idea of all time because my friend in England, who used to be called Visconti Dave, penultimate Dave on, on Instagram, uh, he every once in a while will call each other and say, did you, see, did you just see what Susan showed us? Did you see Susan? Did you see Susan? So uh, that was a, it's a brilliant marketing plan. <laughs> she was, uh, Susan is, is, is very good. Her, her videos are very – they're entertaining and they're informative. They are. And yeah. she's doing on Instagram. You got to get a lot of information in in one minute flat. Yeah, she does so, a good job. Yeah, does a great I'll, job. I will pass that along to both she and, and to Daniel. So thank you. <laughs> okay, now I have a forward thinking question. So Haneider's sure. done the rainbow thing, and Conklin's about to do the rainbow thing. Is Visconti going to do the rainbow thing? Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, I yeah. believe we've already done it. They have. You um, have. Yeah. There's yes. a um, watermark. the watermark. Yes, oh, that was available. Right. Yeah. That was available yeah. in a rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Right. hold that up. Beautiful. You, oh, had that one, Frank? you never knew about that. You I know, didn't know about I that. Know. You had that one, it's Frank. Uh, we can get it. How, how much is that one? Like seven, eight, nine. Well, the, the regular, uh, no, no, Larry, it's not. It's, uh, it's, it's a little more. It's nineteen ninety-five. Yeah, nineteen. <gasps> but what's oh. really cool about these pens, and actually, the Cole sent me one when I I did the Dallas pen show t a couple weeks ago, and they sent me one, and I t I'd never seen it before, and I took it out, and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Well, what I didn't know is that Coles didn't send it to me. It was Drum Ghoul's pen, and I put it back in the Coles box and shipped it back to Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael said, uh, I said, there was a pen in there that wasn't on the list. It's what? I said, it's, it's ra rainbow. It's really cool. I said, the nib, it was all, it was all fluorescent on the nib. I said, it was really cool. I said, I was going to keep it. He said, well, it's not yours and it's not ours. Strongholds. <laughs> so I may take a little heat from Michael Strongholds oh, next week when I'm in San Antonio for the show. But there, there are, that's available. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if we have any in stock. I'd have to check, oh. but it's been, but it's been done. So, what is that pen again called? What's the name of it? The this Stunty is, Watermark. This is the this is the Watermark Blue Moon. Blue Moon. And if you can see the white one, okay. I don't know if you can see it, but, okay, I'm, but getting, the, I'm getting a, a list going on here, Frank. Okay, a list. The, the bridge clip is is like translucent, and that's what really got that me. That is out. a good. Is list. that a, a power filler? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Looking at it. Yeah. Good. Oh, I remember why I'd forgotten about this. That pen was fifteen hundred dollars. There's that. Blue, there's a. There's that rose gold overlay with the blue. I'm. It's a limited edition. Is that the one? It is that it? Well, this is a. This has got a black coating over the sterling silver. Oh, okay. Yeah, there were different ones. There was black. Yeah. 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 White gold. Wow. Yeah. Rose. Yeah. Wow. And, and that rainbow one, yeah. But they're gorgeous. just, yeah, the, the rainbow, I just oh, thought that, that was just uh, an incredible looking pen. Well, Marilyn, it's going to be, uh, it's, gonna, it's not going to be real high end. It's going to be like maybe real high end, like, uh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this, this is, this is 1995. How and much? Yeah. 
1995. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, okay. I got, got it. Eat your heart out, uh, yeah, Tony. Okay, thank you. I got, I got one there. <laughs> Larry, I got one. Oh, I got one. I, I don't have that one. I don't have that. I have this one was a was the Verme, the Verme model. This was an older one that was a limited 38. Yeah. Uh, now there there's a whole bunch of limited ones, but uh, that was my high, the, my very first real expensive pen, my high grail pen, and I will never get rid of it. That uh, it has the 18. I think it has it has a palladium extra fine. It writes like a dream. Just mm -hmm. an incredible pen. That's dream one touch. You better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, mercy. Hey, John, I got to ask you about. Uh, uh, I'll switch gears on this Dupont because uh, that's one pen I don't have. Uh, and uh, I was in New York a couple years ago. I went to this little shop in New York City. Uh, this guy's name was Brown, I believe it was something Brown. Or very Brown. small, yeah, very small shop. I was like in a little flea market place, and I went back there, and he <laughs> pulled out a Dupont. And uh, it was a D line. I guess it's just, that's a big, the large size. Is that yeah, right? Right. And, and I really enjoyed it. I wasn't crazy about the, uh, the the section because it was chrome. You know, it was like a, a kind of a slick section. And I I noticed on this new Guilloche uh, that they have a like a textured section. Right. Is that right? Like a does that help uh, to 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 hold on to that? It's not as slippery. Yeah, I, and I have no. Um, first of all, it's it's Art Brown, and the guy's name is David, and okay. he, he is the authorized repair person for Dupont lighters. Wow! And he, and he bought the name Art Brown from. Oh, that's when, right. When that's Art right. Brown went out of business. Right, you're absolutely right. So yeah, so he bought the logos and everything. So you go on his website; it's got all the old Brown logos and everything and everything. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't find this a problem at all. Okay.